Welcome back to another episode of Mr. M Rocks. Today we're going to do a simple animation where we are going to take a plane and I'm going to adjust this plane so that it will appear to be a poster. And to do that, I'm going to rotate him on the x-axis 90 degrees. I'll scale him also a little bit on the z-axis so it has kind of a poster shape. And I'm going to, uh, if I look at this in render mode right now, I can see that I've got a little plane set up. I've got a light, I've got a plane here. I've got a wall that I'm going to pop up and back. I may put some sort of uh, image on that. But for right now, I want to get an image on my poster. And to do that, that's fairly simple in Blender. Notice I'm in Cycles Render. I'm going to come over to my Materials tab, hit New Property, and in the color, I'm going to hit on this guy with the little white dot, a little gray dot on it, and I'm going to choose Image Texture. At this point, the pink tells me that there's no image currently in place, but that it's expecting or that it's anticipating that I'm going to put an image on uh, this particular object. And so to do that, I'll go to Open File, and I downloaded a picture. It's called, it's a sort of an Art Deco poster. And now the pink is gone. The blue of the poster is there, but I'm not seeing the image. And the reason for that is I'm not mapping uh, quite right. And so I need to come down here and make two changes. One is I need to change the vector, and I also need to change mapping from flat to box. So let's change the vector from uh, vector to generated. And um, that's interesting because every other time I've done this, the image hasn't shown up until I've chosen box. And this time it showed up. You know, one of the things that I'm finding as I work with the lattice is it works differently almost every time I attempt it. I don't know uh, if, if that's a Blender issue or if that's my issue, but let's go ahead and change this back to flat for right now because for some reason it works this time and it's, it's not done that before. Uh, hmm, that's very interesting. Okay, let's go back now. We're coming out of render mode. We're going to go into solid mode again, and I'm going to add a lattice. And so we're going to be animating this in two ways. We're going to make the or create the illusion that the the poster is falling off the wall, and so we want to change its location, rotation, and scale, or actually just rotation, uh, rotation and location. But we also want it to bend. Uh, as if it were sort of a stiff paper or lightweight cardboard kind of image. And so we're going to create shape keys to do that. And we're going to create uh, a lattice around this and apply the shape keys through the lattice. So I'm going to add a lattice. And there's my lattice. You can see it's uh, highlighted. It's in object mode. If I tab into edit mode, select all, I can scale this so that it sort of builds a box around my plane. I'll scale it on the x-axis. I'll push it in on the y-axis. And now as I do this, uh, I need to give both my plane and the lattice a little bit more geometry. To give my plane more geometry, I'll select my plane. I will tab into edit mode. I'll choose W. Uh, the W panel comes up with subdivide. And I'm going to subdivide this. I'll give it, uh, let's say, 10 cuts. Uh, if I want to give it more than that, uh, I can. I can hit W again, subdivide, and maybe I can bump this up even more. Uh, that's a lot of vertices, but it'll create an even flow as this begins to bend. Now, the lattice needs more geometry as well, so I'll tab out of edit mode. Now, in object mode, I select the lattice, and if I choose lattice in the properties panel, I'm going to bump up the number of cuts vertically here, uh, and I'll bump up the number of cuts horizontally here. I think I'll bump all the way up to 10. And that forms a kind of a cage. Notice I can see the lines in the middle. If I click on outside, now I can only see the vertices and lines on the outermost edges of the cage, which will make it a little bit visually more interesting to work with, or more easy, I would say, to work with. OK, at this point, if I move the lattice, nothing's going to happen to the plane. First, I want to parent the plane to the lattice, or in other words, make the lattice the parent of the plane. To do that, I select the plane, then I shift select the lattice. And at this point, I'm going to say control P, and I will say lattice deform. Now, every time I do this, I get a different shape. 
I haven't quite figured out if there's any rhyme or reason to this. I can scale this guy back down. Okay, excuse me, I'm going to undo that. Make sure that I just have the plane selected. Scale him back down this way. Scale him on the z-axis. And now we can see that the plane fits nicely inside of the mesh that I will use to transform or to deform the plane. However, if I tab into edit mode at this point, notice that my plane has changed shape, and I don't know why that is. But we'll go ahead and deal with that later. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, select my lattice. And if I come back over here, notice that I have shape keys. I've got lattice selected. I've got my uh, shape keys here. And I'm going to add, I'm going to hit this plus button five times and oops that was one too many so I'm going to hit basis. The basis is my let's say resting shape. This is the shape that uh, well, I'll always come back to. It's my it's the basis of all my other shapes and I'm going to make these uh, four shapes. I'm going to come in here and call this guy let's say I'm going to say uh, H forward and uh, maybe this will become uh, clear as we do it but uh, this guy will be H back and uh, we'll do V forward, and we will do V back. Okay, so this will give us not only the uh, location rotation uh, changes as we do on the uh, timeline, we'll also be able to make changes with these shapes that I'm about to make. And so first of all, I'm going to start here. Uh, I changed the pivot point to the 3D cursor and I put the 3D cursor right here in the middle and uh, I'm going to use that as my pivot point as I make these changes. So first of all I'm going to box select this whole guy. I'm going to rotate around the x-axis and these guys are going to rotate around the 3D cursor. A to deselect, B to box select all of these guys and again rotate around the x-axis. And I'll continue to do this. If I wanted to I could bring my 3D cursor now up here uh, closer to where the, my dots are, my vertices, and I'm going to box select up here now, and I will rotate again around the x-axis, and finally I'll go ahead and move this cursor up here, and now uh, again deselect everything, box select just this last row, and uh, let's try that one more time, I'll deselect everything, box select this last row, and I'll say rotate around the x, and I can see this guy bending around. Maybe that's sticking out too far, and so that shape is uh, uh, bending around this horizontal line, and it's bending forward. I can do the same thing down below if I deselect everything and uh, move my 3D cursor back to this point, and uh, I'll begin doing the same thing down here. I'll say uh, B to box select these guys. I'm going to rotate around the x-axis, and you guys can kind of see the point. Uh, again, B to box select R around the x-axis. I bring my 3D cursor down here. Again, A, deselect everything. B, box select all of these guys. Didn't want that particular one, so I'm going to say R now, uh, X again. And uh, I might want to move this back in a little bit. And finally, A, B, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to rotate him around the x-axis and I create that kind of C-shape. So that now is one of my C-shapes and I put it on the wrong one. Hmm, that's okay, I'm not going to worry about that. I will simply say uh, tab to go back into my resting mode. I'm going to change the name of this guy so I will simply rename this guy um, Horizontal Forward. I did H forward, it would be um, overwrite that one. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now notice it doesn't, uh, it's not changing, but as I push this scale uh, button, it'll give me up to a, one is 100%, there's about 50%, and there's zero. So I can have that anywhere I want it to be. I'm going to change the name of this guy back now to, uh, say, V forward, which is what the other guy was. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do uh, horizontal back. 
So I've selected this guy, horizontal back. I'm going to tab back into edit mode, and I'm going to do the same thing I just did, move the 3D cursor to the center. I can box select, and you guys get the point. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there. I'll get these other shapes, and then we'll move on. Okay, welcome back. We're going to go ahead and uh, do some animation now. I'm going to do two uh, sort of layers of animation. The first layer is going to be really simple, just moving the location and the rotation of the plane itself. Uh, before I do that, I should mention that I've done a couple other changes here. I've put a wall in and I've put an image on the wall. And so just to have some uh, <laughs> image, it's actually uh, rust paint. But if I were to look at this in rendered mode, it looks like this. And so this poster is going to appear to be falling off. And so it's going to kind of bend forward and then sort of swoop down and go back and forth and then land. And the way that I've got it set up is I made uh, each of my shape keys. So if I uh, select my uh, lattice now and come back to my lattice properties, I can see that I've got this guy moving in several different directions. He can move this way. That's around uh, this vertical line forward. Uh, we have vertical back is now bending back that way. And I've got uh, horizontal back bending back that way. And I've got horizontal forward bending forward around the horizontal line. But I can also mix these. For instance, I can do vertical forward and you can bend in any combination or in any percentage. And so I really do have a lot of flexibility. But the key is I'm going to go ahead and do just the uh, location rotation first and then I'll come back and add shape keys wherever I want. So uh, to do that I'm going to check my record button down here. I call it the record button and then I'm going to uh, come and hit I and I'm really just changing the location and the rotation not the scale. Uh, however, hmm, I don't know if the shape keys are going to affect the scale. So rather than uh, take a chance on that. I'm just going to hit location, rotation, and scale. And I'm going to uh, begin to move this. So I'll come over here, uh, maybe uh, 10 frames into this. So that's a little bit less than half a second. And I'm going to hit another location, rotation, scale. But this time I'm going to move him forward. And I'm going to rotate him slightly around the x-axis like so. So it's going to look like the front is falling forward. And uh, I'll keep doing this. I'll come back a little bit more. And I'll hit, uh, again, Insert, Location, Rotation, Scale. And this time, he's going to come down a little bit. And I'm going to rotate him even more on the x-axis. Make sure he's not sticking through the wall there. And um, I'll keep doing just this part. So now I'll come over to, let's say, uh, say a little bit more than 30 and I'll say uh, insert location rotation scale and again he's going to be falling forward uh, rotating around the x-axis and he's falling down a little bit and uh, so now he's going to kind of swoop this way and swoop this way and so to do this I'll come down about another half second I'll hit uh, I again to give myself another keyframe I location rotation and scale and uh, this time he's going to move uh, forward this way and he's going to rotate around a little bit and come down even a bit more and uh, we'll keep doing this maybe I'll pause there briefly um, but I can say um, insert location rotation scale again and this time he's coming down a little bit but he's going to be coming uh, back and he's going to be rotating around the x-axis and so what I should see is this kind of movement of moving back and forth. Let's see what this looks like so far. So he falls off, he goes this, this way. Okay, just a little bit of a rocking motion. And now I'll do maybe one more. I'll come over here. I'll say uh, insert, location, rotation, scale. He's going to come back this way, come even lower, uh, rotate now this way. And uh, one final one here at about, let's make it 80. Come over here, and he's just going to rest gently on this point. So I'll say location, rotation, scale. He's coming down a little bit more. He's going to be rotating on the x-axis, and he's going to come forward a little bit. 
And so at this point, he's falling off the wall. He's kind of come down, down, down. And uh, he's not bending at all. And so I'm going to change that by doing my second uh, layer of animation. And so to do that, I'm going to come back here to the beginning. And as he's uh, sort of falling forward off the wall, what I'll do is I'll come all the way back here to um, zero. And I'm going to change the shape key. So what I can do here is, let's see, I want to go horizontal forward. And uh, I'm going to move him forward a little bit. And I'm going to come over here and right click and say insert keyframe. And then back over here, do the same thing. Doesn't have to match exactly where the other one is, but I'll hit uh, insert keyframe again and I'll bend it even more. I may want to come uh, vertical forward and hit insert keyframe there and bend that guy in a little bit. And as he comes through each of these, I'll do the same thing. Uh, maybe now I want uh, this guy to come back, so I'll come back here. Let's see, for this guy rather, I'll uh, insert, a, okay, I've got my keyframe in there and I'll move this guy back. Maybe I can even, as he's falling down, insert a keyframe here and have him falling back the other way. And uh, this guy can follow keep coming back down here, uh, insert a keyframe, move that out that way. I'll uh, do horizontal back uh, even a bit more. And uh, let's get rid of this guy, insert keyframe, and we'll get, we'll get rid of this one. But we will keep this guy. Okay. And now as he's continuing to fall, maybe he'll sort of start bending back. So I'll say insert keyframe here and he'll bend back a little bit. And uh, same thing over here. Uh, maybe he even begins to bend forward a little bit more. So I'll insert a keyframe, drop this guy to zero. Uh, insert a keyframe here and maybe he'll come back. Whoops. He'll come back this way. This guy wanted to be all the way to zero. This guy wanted him to come back a little bit. And now as he comes here, I'll take this guy off. And maybe he'll begin to fall a little bit again in the middle. So uh, vertical forward, I'll say insert keyframe. Maybe he can bend, whoops. Vertical forward, maybe he can bend around that way a little bit. And finally, going to come here and I'm going to zero all of these guys out. Uh, maybe not. Maybe uh, maybe this uh, vertical forward should have a little bit left on. So I'll select him and move him a little bit like that. Let's see what the animation looks like. And so that's it. He's falling, he's rotating, he's bending. And if we look at it from, let's go ahead and look at it from the viewport. Let's put it in render mode. Now we're not going to be able to see it in render mode if I just animate it. But what I can do, it's a little bit too grainy, it's not fast enough, but what I can do is take little spot checks and see what it looks like in each of these places. I can see it bending. I can see it bending here. It's in shadow. Might want to adjust my lighting. So you can see it bending again here. It's sort of falling down. And as it falls, it bends in a variety of different ways, both in terms of location, rotation scale, and so forth. So that's it for today. Bye-bye.